Hello friends, this is Dr. Rajiv Dhawan and uh, today I am here to discuss one uh, controversial uh, question uh, in uh, sometimes uh, your VIVA or sometimes you know NEET PG and maybe in the next paper also that in uh, which quadrant you do maringotomy for which indication? What is the difference between maring different maringotomies actually? Now please see Maring otomy means to give a cut on the tympanic membrane. Maring tympanic membrane otomy means to give a cut on the tympanic membrane. Now, Maring otomy has got two main indications. One is ASOM, acute suppurative otitis media with bulging tympanic membrane. There's so much of pus in the middle here, it is bulging the tympanic membrane, and there's a lot of pain in the ear also. And the second indication of the maringotomy is glue ear, also called as serous otitis media. Now, what is the difference between the two maringotomies? Now, first of all, the first difference you need to remember is that in ASOM, we do not put any grommet after the maringotomy. In glue ear, after maringotomy, we put the grommet. You will ask me, sir, what is grommet? First, tell us that. Now, grommet, grommet is also called as middle ear ventilation tube. This is grommet. This is grommet. Grommet means uh, it's kind of prosthesis that you put in the tympanic membrane after doing maringotomy. But point to remember is in ASOM, we do not put any grommet after maringotomy. But in glue ear, we do put a grommet after doing maringotomy. So one difference is that in ASOM after maringotomy, no grommet is required. But in glue ear after maringotomy, we put the grommet. How to remember it easy, easy way? G for glue, G for grommet. So glue needs grommet actually. Okay. Now, second difference is the type of incision we give for these two indications. For that, please to understand that the tympanic membrane has got a middle fibrous layer and the arrangement of the fibers is radial. Radial like this. From the handle of malleus, they mostly they are arranged in a radial manner. Major chunk of fibers are arranged in a radial manner. Okay. Now, there is a, I think, on the basis of the need of grommet putting in the glue ear, you can understand one thing that in, in glue ear, you are anyway putting the grommet after the maringotomy. So your incision will remain open due to grommet. For the next few months, grommet will be there. And after that, grommet will be extruded out. But till the time grommet is there, it's like an artificial material, it is going to be there. The grommet will keep the incision open automatically. But in ASOM, you are not putting any grommet. You are simply giving incision like in IND, incision and drainage of the abscess. You are giving incision, but you want even that incision to remain open for at least few days, maybe two, three days. Okay. So I hope you remember the general surgery rule. If you cut across the fibers, the incision will remain open for more number of days. But if you cut along the fibers, the incision will try to close down very quickly. So in ASOM, look at the screen beta. In ASOM, we should give a circumferential incision beta. Look at the screen, the red thing. This is which is a circumferential incision. It is given for ASOM. But for glue ear, for glue ear, you can give a radial incision. Radial incision. Okay, look at the screen, Mache. Look at the screen. Now, this is your the grommet. Don't you think so? This grommet will anyway keep the incision of maringotomy open for many more months to come till the time it is extruded by the body. So you need not bother about you know incision to remain open or patent. But in ASOM, we are not putting grommet. So in ASOM, we should cut across the fibers like this circumferential incision okay but for the glue ear you can give a radial incision so for asom you give circumferential incision and for glue ear you give 
the radial incision radial incision am i clear so the very easy point to really you know keep in mind that in glue here you are putting the grommet and the grommet will automatically keep the incision open for many more months to come till the time body extrudes the grommet so you need not bother you can cut along the fibers and what is the direction of fiber radial arrangement of fiber so the arrangement of the fiber is radial so incision can also be radial but in asom you need to do something special to keep the incision open for at least next few days okay now for that you have to cut across the fibers okay and the fibers are going what radially so if you will cut across the fibers this will help the incision to remain open for at least next few days okay and one more thing about the uh, the glue here that you are giving radial incision after few months body is going to extrude the grommet out of tympanic membrane it's a foreign body okay but please understand you do not need to do a special surgery to remove the grommet again after few months nature will take care of that with the, you know with the wound and healing part you know what it will gradually extrude the tympanic membrane uh, grommet out of tympanic membrane okay now what will happen when the grommet comes out again the residual you know wound over there okay now because you are given a radial cut along the fibers once the grommet comes out of the tympanic membrane after few months it will be easier for that wound of the maringotomy to heal spontaneously because you have given a radial cut over there okay now so two difference till now in asom no grommet in glue ear there is grommet after maringotomy in asom we give circumferential incision that is you cut across the fibers so that incision can remain open for at least next few days but in glue ear you give the radial incision because anyway you have the grommet which will keep the incision or the open for many more months to come and once the grommet comes out because of the extrusion the residual wound will heal faster because of the radial incision which is along the fibrous or tympanic membrane the third difference is the difference in the side of maringotomy now first of all there are four quadrants of tympanic membrane now look at the screen bachche now what are the various quadrants of tympanic membrane now this is your tympanic membrane beta now there is a uh, ossicle visible through it this is what called handle of malleus this is what cone of light and let me tell you cone of light cone of light is always in the antero inferior quadrant is a easy way wherever your cone of light is there it's the antero inferior quadrant now how we divide the tympanic membrane into four quadrants very simple you just draw one line along the handle of malleus and one line across the tympanic membrane of course this is antero inferior quadrant because you have got what here cone of light so my concept is cone of light area is antero inferior quadrant of course above that is antero superior then posterior superior and posterior inferior okay now one valid question one clinical question the type of question which neat pg is asking now next will be asking that in which quadrant of the tympanic membrane maringotomy is strictly prohibited not indicated prohibited that's a very that in fact that is a valid clinical question okay in which quadrant you should never do maringotomy the answer is never do maringotomy in the posterior superior quadrant posterior superior quadrant why look at the screen once again right behind the posterior superior quadrant you are seeing many uh, important structures like the incus like the you know incudostipedial joint sometime look at the screen bachche we see this is your incus shadow incus i hope you remember this is posterior superior quadrant i am saying never do maringotomy in this quadrant why so why what you speak in the paper or in the exam what choice to take why so because many vital structures lie behind the posterior superior quadrant of tympanic membrane like number 1 long ross of incus number 2 incudostipedial joint number 3 cauda tympani nerve and number 4 the tympanic segment of the facial nerve also so if you are by chance your knife goes deeper it may damage one of these structures so one question is in which quadrant maringotomy is strictly prohibited 
is posterior superior quadrant. Okay. Now, rest of the quadrant you can do Maringotomy. But for ASON, we do Maringotomy in the posterior inferior quadrant. Posterior inferior quadrant. Okay. Now, why we are favoring the Maringotomy in ASOM in posterior inferior quadrant? The reason is that the posterior part of tympanic membrane is more lateral than the anterior part of tympanic membrane. I repeat, posterior part of tympanic membrane is that part which is towards the mastoid area. Anterior part is towards the mandible area. So you look at me, tympanic membrane is mass, towards the mastered part is the posterior part of tympanic membrane, towards the mandible is the anterior part of tympanic membrane. So by the alignment of the tympanic membrane, the posterior part is more outer than the anterior part. When I say outer, it is more towards the external auditory canal. Okay, once again, the posterior part of tympanic membrane is more towards the external artery canal and the anterior part of tympanic membrane is more towards the middle ear. So it is not straight, it is little angulated in such a way that posterior part is more projecting towards the outside and the anterior part is more pressed towards the inside actually. So in a technical language we can say that the posterior part of tympanic membrane is more lateral than anterior in interior part of the membrane. So posterior part of the membrane is more easily accessible for the surgeon when he's trying to do Maringotomy. Okay, once again I say the posterior part of the membrane is more lateral, means more towards external artery canal than the anterior part of the membrane, which is actually pressed towards the middle ear. So when you are putting a microscope, you are putting the ear speculum and taking the mic your Maringotomy knife, it will be easy for you to give a cut on that part of the tympanic membrane which is more accessible towards you. And which is that part which is more accessible to you is the part of tympanic membrane which is more lateral. Lateral means more outer. More outer means more toward external artery canal. And which is that part? It is the posterior part. And out of the posterior part, in which quadrant Maringotomy is prohibited? Posterior superior. The only part left is posterior inferior. So in ASOM, we do Maringotomy in posterior inferior quadrant. Why so? Because it is the most accessible part for the surgeon. Reason being that posterior part of the tympanic membrane is more lateral than the anterior part. Okay. And I hope you remember the incision for ASOM is the circumferential incision. Okay, now what about the glue ear? In glue ear, we give Maringotomy incision in the antero inferior quadrant. Okay, in the antero inferior quadrant. And what is the reason for that? The reason for that is that what is the basic pathology of the glue ear? Is the eustachian tube blockage? Okay. So basically, you take into problems cause the middle ear ventilation problems and they, they are the basic cause behind the glue formation in the middle ear. So you do a surgery, you, you know, you open up the, you know, the tympanic membrane by Maringotomy, you suck the glue out and after that you put a grommet. And now you would like to put the grommet in that part which is closer to the eustachian tube also so that it can closely overlap the physiology also with it and the anatomical locations also. What is the location of the eustachian tube opening in the middle ear? The location of the eustachian tube opening in the middle ear is on the anterior, anterior wall in the lower part of the anterior wall actually. Remember, anterior wall has got two openings. The lower opening of, on the anterior wall is of the eustachian tube. So, if I can tell you that anterior wall of the middle ear has got the eustachian tube opening in the anterior inferior area only. That is why we are giving incision of the glue ear in the anterior inferior quadrant of tympanic membrane so that you are close to that area which was the reason behind this pathology so that it can simulate the anatomical location and the physiological function also because at the end of the day the grommet is also actually acting as middle ear ventilation tube. The main function of eustachian tube is what? Middle ear ventilation. So that is faulty. That's why you're putting an artificial tube called grommet. Grommet is middle ear uh, 
uh, ventilation tube also so you would like to put it in that area in which you you are very close to the the actual anatomical location of eustachian tube also and what is that anatomical location of eustachian tube opening is in the antero inferior wall of the uh, middle ear actually okay right on the anterior wall in the inferior part there is a eustachian tube opening so uh, let me summarize it why we say that in blue ear we do myringotomy in the antero inferior quadrant because it is closer uh, to the eustachian tube natural opening site also and this location of the grommet will be helping it to to sort of you know uh, copy or to simulate or to overlap the anatomical location and the physiological function of the eustachian tube because at the end of the day blue ear is nothing but middle ear ventilation tube okay and eustachian tube is nothing but the natural ventilation tube so we want to replace that function okay now at the end let me summarize for you now there are there are few differences between the myringotomy of the glue ear versus the ASM. Number one, in glue ear, you put the grommet. In ASM, you never put the grommet. In glue ear, you give a radial incision. In the ASM, you give the circumferential incision. Okay. And in glue ear, you give incision in the antero inferior quadrant because you've taken to, which is the main pathology behind this disease, is also lying in that area. So this location of the glue uh, grommet would eventually help it to, you know, sort of copy the anatomical location and the function of the eustachian tube opening also. Okay, but in in ASM you give incision in the posterior inferior quadrant. The reason being that the posterior part of the membrane is more lateral, hence more accessible for the surgeons. Thank you very much. I hope this helps you to solve this particular confusion, which is actually. Very commonly asked thing in the viva also, and can be asked sometime in your in your exam like NEET PG and next exam also. Okay, thank you very much. Keep learning, keep shining.